Meow. Hello YouTubers and random people of the internet, it is me, Ozzy, and today we're going to be discussing a very controversial topic. I just want to start off by saying that there is no right or wrong answer to what we are going to discuss. And I just want to say that consensus isn't fact. I feel like we're living a mentality nowadays where if somebody agrees with someone, then somebody else agrees, then somebody else agrees, and the, it goes on and on, and then all of a sudden that becomes fact, and you think, that's not really the case. A joint shared opinion isn't necessarily fact because someone else will always have a different opinion. I feel like people with the loudest voices are the ones who are negative and want to be heard and there's people in the corner like me who don't really share opinion pieces who think I don't really agree with the general consensus. So that's kind of, this is where this video is coming from. A guy who doesn't always agree with the general consensus and the topics I'm about to discuss I pretty much disagree with almost all, all of what's happened, apart from one really, which I think was very beneficial. And we're going to take money out of the equation just for the purposes of hyperbole, because when it comes down to money, if you're purely going to put it down to a business perspective, then I guess maybe all of these were the right thing to do. But if we're going to talk about artistic integrity, just creativity in general, and just the vision of certain people, then this is a topic I want to discuss. As a filmmaker, I find it very important that a filmmaker's view isn't changed. Obviously it can be discussed like within a company. That's kind of why films have so many people involved because you need to bash your ideas around because if you're stuck in with a tunnel vision, then you kind of warp your perspective a little bit and you become very fixated on one thing. You need input. Input's good. I know that from making short films. Like, the best work I've made is collaborative efforts. So example number one. SFPD! Uh... Meow? Ah! Ah, come on. Probably the one I'm gonna get the most backlash for. The Sonic movie. Now, yes, we know that they redesigned the original design to a more cartoony look for the film, which it was more financially successful. Just generally more people liked it, more people enjoyed it. And I feel like it was very much a popular thing to hate on the original design because I remember seeing memes at the time and I disagreed with the general consensus. I was on board with Sonic looking more realistic. If you were to ask me if you were to do a live action Sonic film, then I'd say, well, you'd obviously make Sonic live action because if you make him a cartoon, from my point of view, that takes you out of it. Like, I'm always taken out of movies that do that where they're very obviously CGI and it just really takes you out of it, at least for me. Uh, so when I watched the film, while I enjoyed the film, it had a lot of good emotional beats, I still felt a little bit cheated, maybe not the right word, but I kind of felt taken out of it because I just looked at Sonic and saw it was this glossy thing and it just wasn't real. So personal preference, I prefer realism. And there's no denying the fact that the, the original cut of the movie is different. Uh, we know from the trailer, the uh, I took 9 million steps today was cut out. Look at this! I took 9 million steps today! The original scene where Longclaw dies, that was taken out. And I feel like a lot of things were chopped and changed because of the new design and I feel like the original vision of the film was lost. I mean, was that better or worse? I mean, I don't know, we've not seen the original cut, we can't make our minds up because we've not seen it. But I still would absolutely love to see that original film. It felt a little bit more visceral, a little bit more real, and it's just something that I just really want to see. Not to say I dislike the new film at all, I, I do enjoy the film, but it does feel like a little bit of a mess in the edit. It feels kind of rushed, uh, things kind of happen because they happen, and it, it's very quick cutting, and it just it took me out of the film a little bit, but I do recognise in the long run it was a good move to change the design because we probably wouldn't be getting a second movie, let's face it, because people wouldn't have bought tickets to the next film if the first one was uh, how it was. I mean, you've got two sides of the argument. You've got the Who Framed Roger Rabbit and you've got like Planet of the Apes and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, live action movies and that's what they were going to go for in the original Sonic movie and that was the established tone of the movie. Like I said, I just feel like there's a little bit of a tonal whiplash between the two things Things, between a cartoony, uh, I mean he was still a little bit realistic but it was still a little bit cartoony. I feel like there was a very obvious difference and it took took me out of it. Like for example when he has the bomb stuck on his glove, like Sonic didn't have gloves in the original cut so it just didn't really make any sense. I just want to say it's not me moaning for the sake of moaning, it's just one of those things which I always want to see what people originally envisioned. But then again it's kind of a bit of a tricky one because Jeff Fowler said he was on the side of the fans. Did he just say that to save face? Maybe. Did he say that because he genuinely wanted Sonic to look more like he did in the games? Maybe. 
but I think if they were running with the original design then I think they definitely had a vision which they wanted to tell, a story that they wanted to tell. And I feel like changing it, yeah, it worked in the long run. Anyway, we'll go on to an example which definitely worked for the better, the, uh, the hashtag Snyder Cut, because obviously in 2017 the Joss Whedon uh, cut was released. You all know the backstory of why uh, Zack Snyder wasn't able to finish the film. To me, the Whedon cut felt very, I don't know, it felt very messy. It felt like it was obviously not supposed to be that film. So the fans petitioned to get the Snyder cut out and it worked and I've seen the Snyder cut and I absolutely adored it. I thought it was probably the best superhero film I've ever seen. Uh, I know it's probably a bit of a stretch, but I had such a blast watching it and it was just such a gorgeous, gorgeous movie. I mean, maybe a little bit slow, but I mean, it's four hours, what do you expect? So that's definitely a case of it working better in the long run. There's probably people who won't bother watching the Snyder Cut because they'll have seen the original. You're probably thinking, oh, that's a lot of nonsense. Well, you've got to remember, there's people who don't go on Twitter and like hashtag release a Snyder Cut. People generally went to see the original and probably enjoyed it and didn't think much of it, but because we're fans, we kind of wanted more. But like I said, it worked in this scenario because it's ultimately a good thing to release what the director set out to do and to not change the vision of the director. So there you go, I agree with that. But linking it back to the Sonic movie, it's different to what they originally envisioned. Now, this is a big one. This is what I'm kind of known for. My love of the Paradigm Daleks uh, from Doctor Who. I adore this design. Yeah, sure, I changed a couple of things about it, but that's just me. Like, it doesn't really matter what I think in the grand scheme of things. And I think that's one of the things we've got to remember. If we'd have stuck with the Paradigm Daleks, then I'm entirely sure that we would have had amazing stories because the Eternal, we never found out what it did. And I just love the fact that we have a Dalek hierarchy, like there's the scientist, strategist, drone, eternal and supreme, and that's just a fascinating idea to me. Like back in uh, the old days, they'd have different colored Daleks and things, and it was always just something that I just loved the idea of. And then because people didn't like the fact that the Daleks looked different, they just cancelled them. They, they just gave in to the, uh, the backlash, and it's such a shame that the arc never went anywhere because it was obvious, well, was it obvious that they wanted to do something good with them. It's been uh, revealed that they didn't know what the Eternal was. Uh, I think I don't think that they had plans, but I think given if people did warm to them, then maybe we would have got good stories. The flip side is people complained and we ended up getting Asylum of the Daleks into the Dalek and the Witch's Familiar. I can see that paradigm backlash really paid off. You're allowed to not like the design, that's completely fine. I, I don't really like the Destiny Daleks that much, I think they're pretty shit. I don't really like the Necros Daleks that much either, but at the end of the day, I love Revelation of the Daleks, I love the idea of the Necros Daleks, and I still love everything about that story. Uh, a simple design isn't really going to sway me when it comes to that kind of thing. And yeah, for the record, the character options action figure of the Necros Dalek looks better than the one on screen, in my opinion. I mean, if you just look at something like City of the Daleks or the Eternity Clock, the paradigm works so well uh, in that because the majority of the Daleks would have been red. It wouldn't have been rainbows flying throughout space because the Supreme would have been on his spaceship and so would the Eternal because there's only one of those. It would have just been like blue and red going around destroying planets and I think the scientists would have like stayed on the ships and stuff. So yes, Victory of the Daleks introduced them wrong because if you put the red Daleks next to the iron sides, the Ironsides are awesome. You put an awesome design next to this new design which people still need to get used to, people are still gonna be attached to the, the old ones, so when you destroyed those, it just didn't work because it was saying, it was like the Sixth Doctor Syndrome. I am the Doctor, whether you like it or not. So it was a bad way of doing it, but I don't think that that should have overruled uh, the creative team. I think that they should have stuck with it. I think they should have blossomed and just told these really awesome stories with potential. I recommend reading The Only Good Dalek if you uh, haven't already. It's uh, pretty much the closest thing that we could get to what it would have looked like on screen. And they've gone forth with it and the designs don't really come into mind when you're reading it because it's just a good story. Now Star Wars, this is uh, a funny one because it's obvious Disney had no roadmap. It's come out that they started production and J.J. Abrams said, oh, I don't know whether Palpatine is going to be Rey's granddad. That's a bad way of doing things, um, to not have a roadmap. People like to say that the, the Force Awakens was a rehash of A New Hope. Yes, it was. Uh, the Phantom Menace was as well. Beat for beat, it was 
practically exactly the same, just with like superficial changes. So I don't think it was necessarily a bad move to do that, to uh, I think it introduced the character as well. Would it have been cool if they'd have done Rey on like a, a different planet that wasn't a desert planet? Yeah, sure. I mean, because Anakin and Luke both came from Tatooine, so it's a bit, a little bit like, oh, we're doing this again. It should not have dictated in the long run the way that the franchise went. But then The Last Jedi came along, and personally, I don't mind the film as a standalone film. It feels like a sore, it sticks out like a sore thumb when put next to all the other movies. It, the tone is just completely different. Oh well, <laughs> I kind of think that episode 9 shouldn't have gone out of its way to retcon things like uh, making Ray's parents special or anything. I just don't think that that was necessary. I think they should have just carried on and just ignored. Well, not they should have just acknowledged what happened in The Last Jedi and just went with it because uh, the, the Rise of Skywalker, it kind of failed pleasing the fans and I think the general consensus among my like, general audiences was meh, so I, I think it didn't work in the long run, uh, caving into the fan demand. Uh, hey ho, that's just my opinion. Your opinion is valid. You are allowed not to like The Last Jedi or The Force Awakens. That's natural. I feel like these petitions to remove Episode 8 from the canon and to refilm Episode 8 are stupid because at the end of the day, you've just got to embrace it, whether you like it or not. Just embrace it, that's that's the thing. Embrace this change, and if you don't like it, then that's cool, man. People are allowed to not like things. I just, this mass mob mentality, I think, is just wrong. Uh, I don't agree with it. Does that mean that we're gonna refilm Series 11 because a petition told me to? No, just let it be, and a lot of it is mindset as well. Like, if you take a break from this kind of thing, I took a break after Series 11 from that era in general. Then when it came to Series 12, I found myself kind of enjoying it a little bit more because I had a fresh mind. I went into it not wanting to hate it. And I'm not saying everybody did, but I feel like as a society, we're so tuned into negativity and how we can change things instead of just letting things be and letting creators' visions just flourish and doing what they want. I used to be very bitter towards the Chris Chibnall era, but now I respect it a lot more. I'm not a big fan of the Timeless Child thing, but I, I have respect for uh, the vision. People will say, oh, well, Chris Chibnall didn't respect the originals by retconning it. Look, okay, you can just take Series 11 and Series 12 out of your head canon. Just remove it if you don't like it. At the end of the day, all that matters is your opinion to you. Like, don't let other people's opinion influence yours. And that's one of those things, like, I don't think opinions should influence things in the broad term, like I said at the beginning. It's important to have different creative ideas to create just a well-rounded story. A lot of people should work on a project, but have you ever heard the phrase, too many cooks in the kitchen? I feel like the fan interaction and fan change uh, ownership mentality is too many cooks in the kitchen, because who do they listen to? because I have a completely different opinion about the Sonic movie to everybody else. But at the end of the day, it's all financial, isn't it? It doesn't matter about the creative vision. It just matters how many people are gonna buy the tickets and what's gonna sell well. But then again, that's not always a bad thing because we wouldn't be getting a Sonic movie too. So what am I trying to put across here? Well, that's, it's one of those things like, just if you're a creator, don't piss people off. I feel like you should do what you want, but also have courtesy to the fans in the fact that don't purposely try and wind them up by changing too much. I think that change is allowed, definitely. Like for example, with the Paradigm Daleks, you're allowed to do something like that, but there is no right answer here, guys. Let me know d down below what you think. I just don't think that there is a proper answer to this uh, debate. It's all entirely subjective, but all monetary as well, so. Yeah, let me know what you thought of this, guys. I uh, just thought I'd change things up a little bit, just try something different. So thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.